What's up, YouTube fam? I just finished editing my monk mode video, and I can't lie, it was the hardest video that I've had to edit and the hardest video I've had making. It I filmed the video on three separate days, and I didn't use two full days of filming because it just, I didn't like it. I didn't like what I was wearing. I didn't like how I was saying things. I didn't like anything about it. The editing took forever just because it was such a long video. And I just wanted to come here and use this as an intro because I feel like this video I had so much inspiration for personally. And I felt like I was going to make one of the most amazing videos ever. And before I post it, I feel like it's good. It's it's decent, but it's just not what I imagined it to be. But I still think there's tons of value in it. And I really do truly believe in the message of monk mode and really just trying to pursue and go over the top in the chasing of our goals, I guess you could say. And so this is really just a progress over perfection moment. And I really hope you guys enjoy. I put my heart, my soul, I put like as much as I could into this video to make it valuable for you guys to really feel inspired to try monk mode and really just go after your dreams. So I hope you enjoy and uh, that's it. Thank you. What up fam? Welcome back to another video. I'm Jay Royce, gym bro, tech guy, lifestyle and productivity novice. When did I get that title? I wanna start off today's video with a combination of quotes from the book Atomic Habits. Now, winners and losers have the same goals. Goals are good for setting a direction, but systems are best for making progress. Goals are about the results you want to achieve. Systems are about the processes that lead to those results. Now, in today's video, I wanna go over a productivity system called Monk Mode. Monk Mode is aimed at taking back control of your life to basically help you accomplish all of your goals in 2023. And by doing this, will put you ahead of 99% of people. So if that sounds like you, sit back, relax, let's get right into the video. How I personally discovered Monk Mode was by finding a YouTuber named Iman Godzi on TikTok. I went over to his YouTube channel, just really started to consume his content around June 2022. Really liked what he was putting out, his message. Um, but it's been a while since then, and I think he's absolutely blown up on YouTube since then. He's got about 1.5 million subscribers, and I think within the last three months, I think he really caught a lot of wind on YouTube. So just a quick side note about Iman. He's been on YouTube for actually six or seven years, so if you're an OG YouTuber, I'm sure you've heard about him and I could do a whole other video about my thoughts on Iman, and let me know down in the comments if, you, if that's something you guys would be interested in, but today we're specifically going to be focusing on monk mode. Moving in to what actually is monk mode. Now, I got this definition off the internet, so I wanna read it to you guys because I think it is a good technical definition of what monk mode is. So, monk mode is a period of enhanced focus, discipline, and productivity where you commit yourself to completing a goal. In monk mode, you take it upon yourself to adopt to the isolation and self-discipline practices of monks. In modern times, being in a monk-like state has been made famous for self-improvement. It is described as an attempt to cope with denying ourselves of all situations and activities by gaining control of our emotional state while pursuing our goals for growth. Now, like I said, I think this is a very good textbook definition of what monk mode is, but what I want to kind of summarize that as is what we're going to do with monk mode is starving distraction and feeding focus. This has been not a groundbreaking idea for me, but I felt like for the past year, I had been extremely unfocused and not really aiming towards a specific goal. And it really was bothering me. I don't know if it was daily or it was just something that was distracting. And I feel like I was letting a lot of other things take priority over pursuing my goals for growth. Now, in one of Iman's videos, he has an opening line that I think really resonated with me personally. Now look, balance is a lie that has been sold to you by people who wanna feel better about themselves that they're average. It's a little bit intense, I'm sorry, but quite frankly, it's the truth. 
And for me, I like the fact that I am intense. I'm immersive. When I'm working, I'm working. Now, if that strikes a chord with you, think about that for a second. If you think of anybody successful at one point in their life, how they got to a million dollar business, uh, entrepreneur, YouTuber, social media, X, Y, or Z, name, insert, successful person. At one point in their life, there was no balance. They did monk mode where work, their goals were their primary focus, and that's what this is. This is an opportunity or a window to create a new identity for yourself. It is a portal from shifting from old habits to a new habits, which in turn will create a whole new person. Now, my view on monk mode is a gateway or a window of opportunity to become the person that you have dreamed of. Basically in the book, Atomic Habits, I know I've been talking about it a lot, but James Clear speaks about identity-based habits and outcome-based habits, as you can see in the graph here. Now, monk mode is an identity-based habits protocol, which not only helps us achieve our overall goals, but it's a guide to help us become the person we want to be. It is a full on identity change. And I know I've mentioned Atomic Habits a few times. I really like the book. I'm reading it right now and I'll actually be doing a full book review in the, one of the next videos. So if that interests you, make sure you smash that subscribe button so you don't miss that video. Now that we've gone over a little bit about the idea of monk mode and what I believe it to be, um, and before we get into the actual monk mode protocol, I want to make two things very, very clear. This isn't for everyone. And the first thing that I wanna make really, really clear is like this video, this protocol, this lifestyle, this really isn't for everyone and I want you to know that. If you're watching this video right now, you're seeking out specific knowledge beco to become better. There are thousands of other videos you could be watching, but you're here and that means something and it's really important that you recognize that. So thank you for being here. But the other thing is, is I say this so you realize that people close to you, the, your closest friends, family, whoever, they may not support you and your goals and your dreams and the person that you know in your mind you can become. They may not believe in it, so you have to believe in it yourself. And two, with that being said, don't try to drag other people who aren't ready for this or seeking this out with you. This journey of improvement is really important and unfortunately you may have to be alone doing it. That doesn't mean you won't have support from people close to you and every it could be the exact opposite. Everybody could be shouting your praises and really pushing you to be the best version of yourself but just realize you may have to do this alone and you may be the only one with the vision in your mind and you need to protect that. And the second thing is you're more than likely gonna have to sacrifice something probably a lot of things. And so I wanted to talk about that. Like when we go down this path of chasing our dreams, right? We're gonna have to give up something of our current lifestyle because our current lifestyle hasn't got us where we wanna go. And so for me personally, and I'm sure tons of you out there can kind of relate to this, video games was a sacrifice for me. Like, no, God, please, no. Like, video games have been a huge part of my life since the Xbox 360 came out. Like. 2K, NHL, NCAA, Call of Duty, obviously. Like this YouTube channel basically became an idea after I was uh, streaming during 2020. So getting dubs and sending kids back to the lobby is like one of my favorite things to do. And I've had my fair share of grinding hours for camos, gun setups, and all of those things. But spending that time, those you know three, four, five hour gameplay times was just a waste of time. And there's really no way around it. Like, do I regret it? Maybe a little bit, but was I having fun at the time? Yes. So I understand. And there's obviously a few exceptions to the rules like Ninja, Nade Shot, all the pro gamers. But statistically for us, like we're not gonna become a pro gamers. Like that's just the facts, like we're not. So the faster you recognize what it is, these distractions that you're willing to give up in your life and you're gonna have to sacrifice is you know one of the biggest steps towards moving towards actually accomplishing these goals. And you're gonna have to give up basically something, more than likely a few things to make time for your goals, whether that's that extra hour for the gym, that extra hour of sleep to recover, the extra hour to meal prep your food, the extra hour for whatever it is. Like you might have to give up Netflix for a while. You might have to delete TikTok and Instagram off your phone. You might not go out with your friends for a while. 
Like there's a lot of things that, that you might have to do in order to accomplish your goals. And the proof is in the pudding. Like if you look at anybody you admire, they have the same 24 hours in the day as you and me, and they did it, they made it. So the excuses as to like, we don't have enough time or I don't have enough time, it really just comes down to that. That's all they really are is excuses, not actual reasons why you can't accomplish your goals. And that's just the honest truth. Okay, so getting into the basics of monk mode, I wanna go over Iman's two videos and just give them a little description of what they are. Um, obviously, if you wanna go watch them, I recommend it, but if not, I'll give you guys a little synopsis. So the, the earliest video that Iman put out was actually from his online course, which I believe is called Agency Flow, and it was like a module in the course that he then just reposted to YouTube. So keep that in mind as that video is definitely geared towards his students and students looking to run a social media marketing agency. So watch the video, but definitely take the bits and pieces that you think will help. It's definitely not meant for everybody as like a large scale monk mode protocol, but it definitely gives you a good intro and there are some things that are useful in that video. So I definitely recommend you check that out. So the second video that Iman posted was definitely a much more YouTube friendly or more geared towards YouTube monk mode video. Like I said, I recommend you watch both, but if you're only gonna watch one, watch the most recent one that he made. It's a lot more relaxed and simplified version of what the actual monk mode protocol is and how Iman is using it more in his recent day-to-day -day life. It's definitely more a balanced approach to monk mode and really shows you the basic outline of what monk mode is. So just getting into what actually monk mode is, it's three non-negotiables of monk mode and then the two to three variables that Iman lays out in that second video. So in this portion of the video, we're gonna be going over the first three non-negotiables. Now the first non-negotiable we're gonna be talking about is a 10 minute daily meditation practice. And I personally love this because I have been practicing meditation for seven years. I actually took a transcendental meditation class and honestly, it has been a game changer in my life. Now, I will be honest, there's some times where I'm really focused and I'm meditating, you know, really consistency, and there's other times when I've fallen off, but since the new year started, the meditation every morning has been keeping me laser focused, and sometimes after these YouTube, after these sessions, I feel like the YouTube videos and ideas and really my creativity is just in that flow state. It's really awesome. Now for transcendental meditation specifically, it's two 20 minute sessions every morning. So I always get my AM one in, I work it into my morning schedule. And now I'm really trying to work in that second 20 minute session in the afternoon. It's hard for me, but that early morning session is a non-negotiable for me. So for you guys, how can you apply this? Now, 20 minutes may be a lot for you guys, and I understand that sometimes meditation can be a really hard thing to start, but the benefits are in being consistent, and there are definitely a lot of tools that can help you guys start. We have the apps on the App Store. I know Calm's a big one, and I think Headspace is another one. You can definitely download those and go through all the free sections. I'm sure there's a bunch of meditation practices free on YouTube. Starting with 20 minutes might be a bit much, so I recommend looking up some protocols. I'm also a big fan of Andrew Huberman, and he has, I think, two or three podcasts that I've been meaning to listen to on the benefits of meditation and which ones may be best for you. So that's definitely something you could check out to kind of guide you in the direction that might be best for you. I'm actually, once I get around to listening to those episodes, I might make some follow-up videos on my thoughts about them. So stay tuned for that. And just to wrap up the meditation, guys, I really can't drive it home enough. The meditation works best when you do it as consistently as possible, which is why I think the 10 minute daily meditation is a essential non-negotiable. So going in to the second non-negotiable of the monk mode protocol is a 30 minute daily workout. Now for me personally, I will not be making this a part of my monk mode protocol because outside of YouTube <sighs> and all the other tasks that I have, my hobbies are basically weightlifting, nutrition, and I take my fitness very seriously. <sighs> um, you'll see some more videos about that Let's as go. the year goes on. But this won't be a part of my monk mode protocol because like I said, it is really something that I already have consistently locked down. Now, how you can apply this is if you're already taking, you know, the gym and all that pretty seriously, you can skip it like me or add something else. 
But if this isn't something that you have on a consistent basis locked down, I think the best plan of action for you is to start small. Go on a walk, walk yourself, walk your dog, go on a hike, try to find something that gets your heart rate up and is something that you personally enjoy doing because if it's something you hate, you're obviously not gonna be able to stick to that routine and keep that consistency. If you guys wanna know my recommendations, I think everybody should be weight training, so I would start there personally. And then the other things that I would look into are some type of mixed martial arts I think is always good because it's kind of like a skill to defend yourself. And then the other things that I've seen people get some serious results from is like calisthenics training and then always mobility work is always great. But running, yoga, walking, just make sure you try to get your heart rate up and keep that consistency. And finally, the third non-negotiable may get a little heavy for some of you, but it's gonna be no drinking, no weed, no drugs. And I think that's for pretty obvious reasons, right? It's a pretty simple idea. And I agree with Amon here who in one of his videos really states like, I don't wanna hear any excuses about why any of these have been a positive force in your life because if they were, and if that was true, if they were positive in any way, shape or form, one, you wouldn't be watching this video and two, your goals and everything would be accomplished and then, you know, and you could attribute it to that, whatever. But that's most likely not the case. So if you're watching this video, please understand that this is a huge non-negotiable. If you wanna to move towards your goals, you can't afford to be clouded, compromised, slowed down, hungover, dependent, or addicted to anything and anything that's synonymous with those words. Those are all negative terms that are associated with doing drugs, drinking, and smoking. So simple, stop it, stop it. Okay, and to wrap up the basics, these are the bare minimum of monk mode. Now, this isn't even the hard part. These are just the small things that you need to do to be successful. And if you can't handle these, these three things on a day-to-day -day basis consistently for however, however long you set this protocol, you will not be successful. That is the unfortunate truth, and there's no way to get around that. I want to emphasize and be abundantly clear that these are the bare essentials of monk mode and are the building blocks of long-term identity change. I believe you can do it. It's not that hard. All the people that you look up to, most likely outside of, let's say, rappers and celebrities, which you shouldn't be looking up to anyways for a multitude of reasons, have more than likely come out and stated that you cannot be successful if the partying and just the full-on indulgence of the outside world takes priority over your goals. The Kobe Bryants, the Andrew Hubermans, the Joe Rogans, the Patrick Beth Davids, Sean Cannell. These people are some of the people that I admire, Arnold Schwarzenegger, and have been proven to be successful in these in their own rights. And for the most part, I think they would agree in saying that you cannot be a high performer, above average, or an elite talent when your priorities are not on your goals. Now, Iman does these monk mode protocols in sprints, depending on exactly what's going on in his life. So he'll set them for 21, 30, 60 days, and then that's followed by a short break, whether that's a couple days, a weekend, a couple weeks, and then he'll go back into another monk mode. Now, now how I'm personally taking my monk mode journey and how I'm looking at this is more as a lifestyle shift as opposed to a protocol. Now, before monk mode became a protocol, Iman was basically living out monk mode in his day-to-day -day life. In some of his YouTube videos and earlier content, he states that he was locking his phone into a safe until noon so he wouldn't be distracted by it and could just focus strictly on business. He was reading a book of week while also documenting his whole YouTube journey, documenting his fitness stuff, his growing his social media presence, growing his social media agency when he started there. I think he also may have dropped out of high school to basically pursue business full time, as well as documenting that all on YouTube. So Monk Mode was basically a lifestyle for Iman up until the point where he actually reached his goals and created these businesses and this wealth for himself that now he made it a protocol, as you would say, because there is so much distraction in his current life that he created for himself that he needs to make time for these bouts of intense focus so that he can still continue to move forward his businesses, his goals, blah, 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 and whatever else. But for us, or 
what I would bring to you is, is that really think about where you are in your specific journey. For me personally, I am not anywhere near the goals that I want to be. So I think monk mode needs to become more of a lifestyle as opposed to a short bout of focus. Now, I think you can do these short bouts of focus where you do utilize that set a certain period of time, take a break, set a certain period of time. And Iman does even, does even mention that that could be better for the long term. I maybe will try that out, but for right now, I'm looking at this as a mindset shift because we aren't on Iman's level yet. Now, with that being said, let's start getting into how I'm actually going to set up my monk mode. Whew. Finally, we got to the end of the mindset portion of monk mode. Now, I think the mindset portion is extremely important for us because it really sets the base for monk mode. I think, you know, maybe even 80% of monk mode is all mindset and the other 20% is just executing on the practical steps of the first three that we mentioned earlier and then the two to three variables that you set up for yourself in the end here. So moving into those actual practical steps, we're gonna be getting into my first practical step of monk mode and that's using a calendar. Now, I know for some of you out there, you might be like, "Who ha like, why haven't you been using a calendar? I don't have the answer, I don't know. I just figured, how do I take control of my time? And I didn't have a calendar, and so that seemed to be a great place to start. So my first tip is I'm going to be using a calendar religiously this year. I am going to live and die by the calendar. There's a really great quote that I like here by Peter Drucker, I hope I'm saying his name right, and it states, what gets measured gets improved. And what we need to measure is our time to see where we're allocating our time throughout the week. Now, time is our most valuable asset. And why is that? Because once it's gone, it's gone. And I've wasted over thousands of hours. Looking back on it, it's almost disgusting. It makes me super sad about how many hours that I've just wasted because I wasn't structuring what I need to be doing with that time. I've been tracking my time for about two weeks now and I've already seen mass improvements in terms of pushing forward these YouTube projects, which is where I wanna spend more of my time. If you go on Productivity YouTube, which I'm a participator in because I'm always looking for how to improve because I'm not really not knowledgeable in this area and I want to get better, all these productivity gurus always t talk about having a calendar and basically setting it up to enhance your life. And I'm 100% gonna be implementing this into my new identity. Ali Abdal, in one of his videos, stated a quote that I really, really like. Which said something like, at any given moment, you are doing what you most want to be doing. We are always in control of our time. So to say that you don't have enough time, it's because you aren't scheduling your time. And then if that's still the, not the issue, then it's because you don't actually wanna be doing that. So just recognize that. So with that being said, we're just gonna get over into the calendar. I'm gonna show you guys some time blocking, some high level stuff, just a little tweaks and things about how I'm setting up my calendar, what I'm doing. It will be pretty high level and not too specific. Let me know down in the comments if you guys want me to do another deep dive into how I set up my Google Calendar, as well as like the, the methods and thought processes behind that. I, I have a ton of video ideas from this video and I would love to share that with you guys. So definitely let me know down below. Okay guys, so we're hopping into the calendar right now. I am gonna keep it pretty high level like I mentioned. So we're not gonna get too in depth into what my calendar is looking like and why it's set up the way it is. But like I said, let me know down in the comments if you guys are interested in a more in-depth video on the calendar. So the first thing that we have to do when we wanna set up a calendar is actually pick a calendar. As you can see here uh, on the screen, I went with Google Calendar just because I operate between Mac and PC. So it's easier for me to just go back and forth as opposed to just using Apple calendars, which is why I went with the Google Calendar. But there's some other apps I've seen them all over YouTube. So the first thing is, is just pick a calendar app that's gonna work for you. The second thing about the calendar that we're gonna be doing is setting aside a time each week to plan our actual week. So right here, I have it on Monday between eight and nine. That's because I actually didn't get to it yesterday. But I think the most ideal situation for this is actually putting this somewhere on Sunday and somewhere where you're awake. like. Maybe you wanna do it at the end of the night, maybe you don't, but just find the best time that works for you. I think doing it early in the morning when you're kinda, of, or in the middle of the day when you're most alert, 
for me on Sundays, like towards the end of the day, like it's already a kind of like lazy day for me anyway. So planning my week at, you know, eight or nine o'clock is not something that I'm going to be looking forward to, which means it may not happen. So actually set aside some time each week, about an hour, maybe less, maybe you only need 30 minutes to actually set up your calendar and see what you have for the following week. And that brings me into my third point. When you're doing this hour of planning out your week, you wanna be as detailed as humanly possible about where you're actually gonna be spending each day and each hour of each day. So here's an example calendar, it's of this week. Now some of these things I had in some previous weeks that I just added into here to kind of show you guys what a schedule of mine would look like. Now, obviously, if you guys have a job, like there's gonna be a huge block for work or whatever days you have to work. But I mean, as you can see here, I have all my gym time with like commute time baked into that, as well as like I have my YouTube set aside, some job hunting if I wanna get into that. And then I have all my appointments set up like this dog wash. I have reading set up. I have my whole morning routine. I wanna be doing some of this free learn every night where I just, you know, kind of brush up on something that I've been meaning to get to. And then I have my wind down routine, you know, towards the end of the night. I get so detailed as to even putting like when I'm gonna shower in there because you wanna to try to account for every hour as much as possible because that will create the best possible environment and scenario for you to not really be wasting time. And that's basically the whole point of the calendar. So like I said, just to go over the three things that I wanna reiterate is pick a calendar that works best for you, make sure you set aside a time each week to go over setting up your week, and then lastly, make sure to be as detailed as possible in regards to what you're gonna be doing for the rest of the week. So to quote Ali Abdal again in another one of his videos, he actually says, if it is not in my calendar, it does not exist. And that's how I'm taking my mentality in regards to my calendar. Everything that I do is going on the calendar. And if it's not on there, it does not exist. And like I said, I kept it pretty high level for you guys. So let me know down in the comments if you want me to do a deeper dive into this strategy and what I'm doing. I'm still learning. I'm still kind of crafting the process to fit me the best. So somewhere down the line, I'll probably refine it and have it in a better position. I'd love to share that with you guys once it's done. Awesome, now that we went over the calendar, moving into my second variable for my personal monk mode has to do with my phone. Now, it's not gonna be one specific thing with my phone, but an overall redoing of how I use my phone and how it's set up to set me up for success and basically starving the distraction that is our phones and feeding the focus that I wanna put into this YouTube channel. Now, Iman has a really good video back from a while ago about your phone being a huge distraction. And if you think that your phone's not a distraction, you are absolutely lying to yourself and you're crazy. Get that out of your head right now. This has been one of the worst distractions ever created in my personal life, to be honest. But we're changing our lives here and we're gonna, we're gonna be different this year. So the first thing that I'm actually gonna do with my phone, and it's currently on right now, but I'm gonna turn my phone on into do not disturb or work mode is how I have it set permanently for the foreseeable future. Don't know when I'm gonna turn it off, don't know if I'll ever turn it off, but for right now, I am turning my work mode or do not disturb mode on indefinitely. Now, how do you do that? You swipe down, you go to the do not disturb on your screen, mine says work like I said, and you turn that on. So basically, we turn this on and essentially it cuts off all notifications on our phone. I have it set to where, we'll just go into the settings menu here. I have it set to where I have a couple people that can text me and then about six or seven apps of things that are used to basically improve my life. So like my calendar, my to-do list, my food app, and then a couple other ones um, that are important. But everything else from text, email, Obviously, if you need email, turn it on, but for text, email, Instagram, sports apps, every application in this mode is turned off and notifications are shut down. Now, the idea is here, our phones can be one of the greatest tools for us to generate wealth. What I call them, fun coupons, see that? Whether that be millions of dollars, a side hustle, whatever, our phones are an amazing tool. Keyword, tool but they can also, and more than likely what they are for you and used to be for me, are massive distractions. There are endless things to read, games to play, articles to read, things to post, things to consume, 
and it's overall just a horrible distraction, so you need to set your phone up in order for it to help you be in control. Now, if you have over five apps on your phone, which if you don't have five apps, just throw your smartphone away, but you know you're bombarded with notifications over and over about the dumbest things, and things that don't even need to be filling your head. So by doing this, we cut out that one pathway of distraction. There's this other YouTuber that I found on Productivity YouTube named Rowan Sai. I think I said her name right, hopefully I did. I'll obviously link it down below. She pointed out an article going over her home screen video that one notification, regardless of how irrelevant it is, can actually distract you up to 23 minutes and 15 seconds to then eventually focus back on the task that you were trying to complete at the beginning. 23 minutes! So you look at something that says hot new deal on men's clothing and you're a girl or an artist sells a painting for a new record and you're a guy, I don't care. That literally affects my life in so, doesn't affect me at all and now I could potentially be distracted for almost another half hour than actually focusing on what I need to get done to move me closer to my goals. By turning off these notifications, what we're actually creating is intent with our phones. We are being intentional about using our phones and checking in on things that we wanna check on when we actually have the time set aside. In that same video by Rowena, she has a great quote that I really, really like. You want to be in control of when you check in on your phone not have your phone check in on you. And I think that's what majority of us have going on, our phones checking in on us. And that is a terrible, terrible recipe for success. So after we've set our do not disturb mode on, the second thing that I wanna set up on my phone or I've set up is my home screen. Now we wanna create minimal distraction on our home screen. I'm sure most of us, like I used to, have Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat, Twitter, Safari, my email, and basically every distraction known to man at a finger's reach in the, in the most optimal ways for my thumb to reach it with one hand. Now that is a disaster for productivity. That is like the opposite of what we should be doing. So on our home screen, we're now gonna create a more distraction friendly or a more focused home screen, if you will. So the first widget you need to add on your home screen is actually gonna be your calendar at the very top. So the calendar is gonna show you what you need to be doing and when. That's what you need to be looking at is your calendar. Second, what I put in is screen time. So you can actually see in your face every day how much time you're wasting on your screen. That should help you say like, oh, I spent 12 hours on my phone today and I didn't really accomplish anything? Hmm, I should probably stop that. Or maybe you should feel a little bit of shame in regards to that. You know, that's kind of what that's there for. It's a reality check. And I know we all hate reality. So that's the second thing. And the third thing, what I added is a Todoist task, which is basically a thing where I write down any tasks that I need to do. There's a whole other idea behind a, a to-do list or a task manager. I'm not gonna get into it in this video, but that's what's there. And then on the rest of the other apps that I have there is basically Instapaper, which I'm gonna talk about in future videos, my macro factor, which is how I track what food I eat, and my and the YouTube app because I reply to comments, as well as I'm trying to be on YouTube as much as possible so I can stay up to date with what people are watching, et cetera, et cetera. The second thing is, is I tried to minimize as many home pages as I have, and I'm trying to get it down to two because a lot of other YouTubers that have showed me actually how to kind of take advantage of your screen best is to take advantage of the app library because you can always go look up an app. So the more friction you can create by like, let's say deleting Instagram off one of your home pages, and then actually have to go to the app library to find Instagram, that's the type of things that I'm doing on my phone to basically create more productivity. Now, I'm still working on the best configuration of my home screen personally. Maybe in the summer, for once I get a feel of what workflow works best, I can come back and let you guys know. Let me know if that's something you guys would be interested in. But for right now, the main things that I put on my home screen is that calendar widget, the screen time widget, a to-do list, and then putting only the essential apps that I need to use or something that's gonna benefit me on the home page. Okay, so our phone's on do not disturb. We're getting no notifications. We set up our home screen for the most productive home screen possible. 
and you thought I was about to forget about the social media apps? You're crazy. <laughs> You're wild. So the last thing that we need to do is actually curate our social feeds. So the big problem with social media, obviously, is that it's extremely addictive. These algorithms are designed to keep us on the app and just give us as much dopamine as humanly possible. And that habit is not healthy for productivity. As Tony Robbins says, Wherever focus goes, energy flows. And so where do I want to be sending my focus? I want these apps to be apps that are useful to me and teaching me something or keeping me up to date with my current goals. So for me personally, I want these to be teaching me about YouTube, some tactics I can use for when to post or how to edit or some new learning that I can have on YouTube, Instagram and all of these things. So I want my time to be focused on outlets that are talking to me about either increasing my pro productivity, how to edit faster, new editing techniques, what people are watching. I want to be learning when I'm all on these apps and staying up to date with things that matter to me and really setting that intention as having these apps be learning platforms, not entertainment platforms. So how did I do this? On Instagram, the way I did this was I unfollowed every meme account, I unfollowed any celebrity or musician, I unfollowed any type of league or like kind of major media outlets that aren't really important or pertinent to what I want filling my head. And so this is just gonna create a clearer space for Instagram and leave out all of the unnecessary information that I used to just see, intake, hold on to them into my head for nothing and really just clean up my feeds. And I'm trying to make it as not boring, but basically as informational as possible. I've also muted like those mutual contacts that you, you've met and talked to and all of those people that you know, but aren't in your direct life where you haven't spoken with them over a phone call, text, anything, or seen them in person over the past, let's say six months. Anybody like that, I put on mute, not because I don't want, I don't want to unfollow them because I still obviously value their friendship, but I just don't need to have every update of their life because it's distracting me from my own life and my own goals. And so that's something that I think you need to consider on all your social media outlets is really go through and see what accounts are providing value and unfollow them if they're not or mute them if you don't wanna unfollow them. And this is really gonna breed that environment of more focus and less distraction because I can't explain to you how much information I had in my head of things that were just extremely irrelevant. And so that is clogging up the mental pathways in our head of things of like basically brain power we could be using to one, either be more creative or two, focus on things that actually will push us closer to our goals. So those were the first two variables and the third variable that I wanted to do for my monk mode was read more. Now Iman in his original monk mode kind of lifestyle read about a book a week and I don't know if I'm gonna do that, but I did wanna read more. And if you follow Ali Abdal, or like I've mentioned him earlier, he says that this one of the single most important pieces of tech he's ever bought is a Kindle. And so I decided to try that out because for a multitude of reasons, this just makes reading a hundred times easier. So wanted to give that try because actual reading books and everything is just a little bit of a struggle for a couple reasons. Um, won't get too much into it, but like I said, buying a Kindle and reading more or reading daily is my third task. I'm gonna be doing a full in-depth review on actually why I bought the Kindle and all of the integrations that and functions that I think are valuable and why this makes reading 100 times easier. So if that interests you, make sure to smash that subscribe button. That video will be out in a couple weeks and I don't want you to miss it. And those are the three variables for my monk mode. Those ideas I have flushed out and I will be following this protocol for the entire year. Using my calendar, basically turning my phone into a focus machine and not a time suck. And I want to read a lot more this year. And there are a few other things that I do want to implement as the year goes on and I kind of nailed down this system. And as, as a little bonus tip, I will give you guys what those are. So there's three other things that I'll be working on that are a little more complex and I haven't really flushed out all the details. But the first one is working in Notion, setting up a second brain. Now this idea of a second brain is by an author named Tiago Forte, who wrote a book about it a, a while back, and there have been a lot of productivity YouTubers 
who have created these systems. And the idea behind the second brain is that essentially it's for you to free up as much space in your brain, put it into a logged and memorized system where you can go recall tons of information so that you can, cre you can create a space in your own mind to be able to create and think more clearly while also being able to get all of those past ideas from a database. So I'll be working on that. Thomas Frank has a really good notion guide that I'll link below, but it seemed really complex and I wanna start with the basics before I start getting into the mastery stuff. The second thing is for me personally, what I struggle with is being tidy. I'm not dirty. I'm just messy and there is a difference. I want to have a more put together environment as that is the best breeding ground for creativity when everything is in its place and you have the idea to free flowly instead of living in kind of like a clutter situation. So that's kind of the second thing that I personally wanna work on throughout the year. And then lastly, this is just like a bonus tip, not really something that I'm trying to implement, but for you guys, Anything that you listen to audio wise, as well as YouTube videos, I have been implementing listening to podcasts on 1.5 X speed, and I've been watching every YouTube video on 2X speed. Now I say this so that you can consume the, con the same content faster. And I say that so not that you go consume more content, I want you to stop consuming and start creating, but that you can get the same information quicker, which allows you to spend more of your time doing things that are gonna allow you to be in that creative atmosphere and actually taking the actions for what it is you wanna accomplish. So to wrap things up, I wanted to mention one last thing about monk mode. Monk mode is a tool and what worked for Iman worked for him and what's gonna work for me is gonna work for me and I'm gonna take what I've seen in some of these other monk mode videos, what I've seen from Amon, and I'm gonna apply it to my life. And I'm just sharing with you guys what I'm doing to implement what I think is gonna help for my specific goals, which may be different from you. So if you have no idea where to start, I recommend figuring out which one of these protocols you like, run it for let's say 21 days, three weeks, so you, you can at least see some type of results, and then decide from there what you need to, to add, subtract, delete, or reevaluate what's gonna work best for you. Because at the end of the day, monk mode will only work for you because you're the only one that knows what you need to help you move you closer to your goals. So that's the end of this video, guys. Like I said, with these tools that I've set in place, my three variables, I think these are gonna be the pillars of my success moving forward into 2023 and beyond. What I really wanted to, to do was create intention and control over my time and put a lot more time into creating for you guys. I really do enjoy this, it's super fun for me and I feel like sharing this information so that somehow you can use it and move yourself closer to your goals as I am moving myself closer to mine. So we've created the plan on how we're gonna execute and now we just need to actually execute. The theme for this year for me is to starve distraction and feed focus. Now, I'm gonna be linking a ton of resources down in the comments from multiple monk mode videos to some productivity YouTubers that I enjoy and just a plethora of resources down in the comments below. But let me know down in the comments what you guys are doing for your monk mode, anything that I can make another video on to help you guys out. And please share with me any resources that you guys think are valuable, whether that's some to-do apps or if you guys are way further along in this journey, please share down in the comments what is working for you so that we can all be successful together. That's it for this video, guys. And I wanna leave you guys with one last quote. You are in control of your life. Go out and change it. I'm Jay Royce, I love you guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.